SpaceX has been making remarkable strides in space exploration for years, but the biggest hurdle they've encountered isn't rocket science, but by endless government paperwork. Especially with their Starship program and the upcoming fifth flight, it's been a real pain. SpaceX has had its fifth Starship test flight on hold for quite a while now. Despite the rocket being technically ready since early August, they haven't been able to get off the ground. Why? Well, it's all about the Federal Aviation Administration, which has not yet given the green light for this flight. The FAA has delayed issuing a launch license due to a range of concerns, including environmental and safety reviews that need more thorough examination. Speaking of environmental impact, the FAA's demands are extensive. For this particular flight, they've required a re-evaluation of the environmental impact because the flight path will cover a larger area than previously reviewed. This means more consultations with other agencies like the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, which of course adds more time to the clock before SpaceX can launch. Then there's the issue of fines. The FAA has imposed fines on SpaceX totaling over $630,000 for previous breaches of regulatory requirements. These fines relate to unapproved changes SpaceX made to their launch protocols and their environmental protection measures. Musk has been looking for ways around the FAA's strict rules in Texas, and he seems to have found a possible solution to the ongoing regulatory challenges. His solution? Shifting significant launch operations to Florida. SpaceX's facilities in Texas have come under fire for various reasons. Environmental agencies and local groups have raised concerns about the potential impacts on local ecosystems and wildlife. These challenges have led to increased scrutiny and have required SpaceX to implement numerous mitigation strategies to minimize their impact, which in turn has slowed down the progress of their projects. The continuous loop of reviews and permits has been a significant hurdle. In contrast, Florida offers a more streamlined environment for aerospace activities. The state is already a significant hub for space launches, boasting infrastructure and a regulatory environment that might be more conducive to rapid development and testing. Florida's Space Coast is home to NASA and numerous other aerospace entities, making it a strategic location for coordination and collaboration within the industry. Proposing to increase the launch frequency to up to 44 Starship missions per year from the Kennedy Space Center, Musk's strategy includes making full use of the established aerospace infrastructure. This move could potentially reduce logistical hurdles and expedite the licensing process, which has been a persistent issue in Texas. Furthermore, the geographical and infrastructural advantages of Florida including the ability to separate launch and landing operations, could enhance operational efficiency. For instance, having a dedicated catch tower for the Super Heavy booster would optimize the recovery and reuse process, a core component of SpaceX's cost reduction strategy. Moreover, shifting operations to Florida could serve as a strategic move to better align with governmental and commercial aerospace projects, possibly easing some of the friction SpaceX has encountered with federal regulators. Musk has repeatedly expressed frustration with the FAA's handling of SpaceX's regulatory approvals. In various statements, Musk has called for reforms within the FAA, suggesting that the current regulatory environment is incompatible with the innovative pace necessary for significant advancements in space technology. He has even called for the resignation of FAA officials over what he describes as obstructive and overly cautious regulatory actions that do not always correlate with actual safety risks, but are more about environmental and procedural issues. Musk's critique grew particularly sharp after a delay in the Starship program, which he attributed to the FAA's inefficient handling of environmental reviews and other bureaucratic processes that he believes are out of step with the actual risks posed. He argues that these delays not only threaten SpaceX's timelines for Mars, but also its commitments under NASA's Artemis program which aims to return humans to the moon and potentially use the moon as a stepping stone for Mars missions. In addition to moving the launch site, SpaceX is implementing some very impressive changes to the Starship rocket itself. Among these changes, the rocket will see an increase in the number of Raptor engines from six to nine. 
This upgrade will significantly boost the rocket's thrust capabilities, allowing it to handle heavier payloads and enhance its overall mission flexibility. To support the additional engines, the propellant tanks are being enlarged to accommodate more fuel. This is crucial for extending the duration of missions, particularly for those aimed at exploring the Moon and Mars, and it also supports the higher energy requirements introduced by the additional engines. Structural adjustments are also part of the upgrades. These include modifications to the booster and the spacecraft's structure to better support the increased load and new engine configuration. Adjustments are likely to involve changes to the tank domes and possibly the payload bays to optimize weight distribution and enhance structural integrity. Improvements to the thermal protection system and the rocket's aerodynamics are anticipated as well. These enhancements aim to better manage the intense thermal and mechanical stresses during the high-speed re-entry phases of the mission, which have posed significant challenges in previous flights. Moreover, SpaceX is refining its landing technologies, including the development of the ambitious Mechazilla catching mechanism. This system is designed to catch the booster upon re-entry, improving the safety and accuracy of landings, whether on drone ships or terrestrial platforms. The Mechazilla system was tested through simulations during the fourth Starship flight. These tests helped SpaceX see how well the catching mechanism worked and gave them the confidence to plan a real catching attempt for the next flight. If successful, this method would allow SpaceX to quickly get the booster ready for another launch, possibly within an hour. The flight successfully demonstrated the first successful ocean landing and recovery of the Super Heavy Booster, identified as B-11. The booster performed a controlled landing burn, slowing its descent to gently touch down in the Gulf of Mexico. Although the ocean splashdown of SpaceX's Super Heavy booster during its fourth test flight appeared smooth, the recent recovery operation revealed otherwise. When SpaceX lifted the booster from the Gulf of Mexico, it wasn't as pristine as hoped. Musk shared images of the retrieval, describing the booster's condition as a fixer-upper. The visible wear and tear from its ocean landing showed that even successful splashdowns can be harsh on the rocket's structure and components. Despite these challenges, the recovered parts, particularly the engines, are invaluable for SpaceX. They provide crucial data on how the Raptor engines performed during the flight. The wear and tear from the ocean splashdown is a key reason why SpaceX is focusing on developing the Mechazilla catching arms. This new method involves using large mechanical arms to catch the booster before it hits the ocean, which can help prevent the kind of damage seen in the recent recovery. Catching the booster mid-air would not only reduce damage but also significantly cut down the time and cost involved in refurbishing and preparing the booster for the next launch. Ideally, this system would allow the booster to be ready for relaunch within an hour. Whether the catching mechanism SpaceX plans to use will work as expected can't be confirmed until it's actually tested in a real flight scenario. We are all eager to see how this system will perform during the next Starship flight. However, the launch initially anticipated earlier has been pushed to late November due to delays from the FAA. If you've watched this far, it means you are one of our loyal viewers. And I've got something special just for you. We have highly realistic Starship models available on eBay, exclusively for our dedicated fans. Head to the link in the description and grab your own model. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.